This is a presentation of DSP Media. Hey folks, it's Tito Jeff Thetoff at Fit Happens on Twitter. If you want to find me there, the Buckeye Blitz. Uh, the Buckeyes enter the first week of a three-game gauntlet hosting seventh-ranked Michigan State. Uh, there's lots of talk about how the spread in this game, 19 and a half to be exact, is too big, but I think it's pretty close to where it should be. Did you know Michigan State's the worst team in the country against the pass? They give up nearly 330 yards a game through the air, and this week the Spartans are going against a Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback in the deepest talent pool of pass catchers in the country. Three Buckeye receivers are in the top eight in yards per game in the Big Ten. I don't envision Ohio State's offensive line having too much trouble with MSU's defensive front, but the running backs will be tested in pass coverage uh, in the past game. I think the Spartans are going to throw a lot of blitz packages at C.J. Stroud. As long as he has time to throw, I expect a big day from the Buckeye offense. Not worried about that. Defensively, this will be the biggest challenge uh, for the Buckeyes this season. Through 10 games, Kenneth Walker III has 1,473 yards and 18 touchdowns. He's a 5'10", 210-pound slasher. He does and he moves really well. As a matter of fact, um, he leads the country with 82 missed forced forced missed tackles, and he also has um, over 1,000 yards, 1,068 yards after contact. Brief side note here. Back in the early 80s, Oklahoma and Ohio State were about to play um, in Norman, and the Sooners had the stud running back, a Heisman Trophy running back, named, a trophy, trophy hopeful named Marcus Dupree. There's a great 30 for 30 on him that ESPN put out as well. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I was buying all the hype. I was 12 years old. I was worried about Dupree, worried about the Sooners knocking off my beloved Buckeyes. And my father was the exact opposite. Um, he he just said, look, Dupree's overrated. The Buckeyes defense is better than people think. And uh, Dupree probably won't even finish the game. And my dad was right on all counts. Dupree exited with an injury in the first half, uh, finished with just 30 yards rushing. He fumbled once, and Ohio State won 24-14. My point in all this is that I typically fade big-time running backs when they play the Buckeyes because it's now part of my DNA to do that thanks to Pops. But I am not, I'm not going to do that with Walker, though. I'm not going to fade Walker. This dude's the real deal. Uh, Michigan State will try to keep the ball out of Stroud's hands by giving the ball to Walker a lot. Uh you know, Michigan's got a good defense, and Walker shredded them for 197 yards in their win over the Wolverines. He's durable. He had 30 carries last week against Maryland. Uh, will he have more than 200 yards against Ohio State? No, because I think that the Buckeyes will get out to a big lead and force Michigan to throw the ball, which is something Michigan State doesn't want to do. Peyton Thorne's okay at quarterback, but he does have eight interceptions, including seven uh, in the last five games. that at least one pick in each of the last five games as well. I expect Ohio State's going to pressure Thorne. They're going to force a couple of picks. I think it'll be close early, um, but I think that Ohio State will uh, be able to pull away and cover the spread. I think that Michigan State will try to give the ball to Walker a lot early on, and so he might get some yards that way. But uh, by the time the game gets moving, Ohio State, I think their offense is going to jump out to a big lead, and they're going to force Michigan State to throw the ball, which is something Michigan State doesn't do all that well. So I do think the Buckeyes cover. Um, I know Michigan, it's, it's funny seeing the seventh ranked team in the country as a 19 and a half point underdog to the fourth ranked team in the country. This isn't like they're, it, it, this is a scrub team playing uh, Georgia or Alabama. This is a, a really good Michigan State football team, uh, probably the second best team in the Big Ten, maybe the third best, but they're one of the top teams in the Big Ten, one of the top 10 teams in the country, I believe. And they just gave Mel Tucker, they're in the process of discussing a deal with Mel Tucker, which will pay him $95 million, um, over 10 years. But uh, so it's it's a good team. It's just Ohio State's on a different level, and Michigan State's biggest weakness is that passing defense, and Ohio State's strength is the way they can spread the field with all these wonderful receivers they have. You saw what Garrett Wilson did last week. Um, you know you, you know what this uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba and also Chris Olave, what they can all do. So, yeah, I think Ohio State does cover the spread. We'll move over to the hardwood now. Uh, the Buckeye men lost to Xavier, 71-65, to part of the Gabbitt. Gavit tip-off games. E.J. Liddell led with 17 points and eight, count them, eight blocks. Um, and Michi Johnson Jr. scored 14 in the loss. Xavier jumped out to a big lead in this game, jumped out in front early, and they never let up. The Buckeyes did have some chances down the stretch, but a couple of missed free throws and defensive lapses did them in. The Buckeyes now 3-1 on the season and uh, have played really just one complete game so far. Uh so I am a little concerned, not about them missing the tournament. I, I, I mean, this team's too good to miss the NCAA tournament. But I'm concerned about 
the next month or so when Ohio State's got to take on Seton Hall, which is next week. They take on Duke and they can take on Kentucky. Uh, first up, Seton Hall is in the Fort Myers tip-off next week. Um, and uh, the Pirates just won in, in Michigan against the fourth-ranked Wolverines. So we know that the, the Seton Hall is a good team. But um, after that, they'll take on either 3-0 and Florida, who's ranked 24th in the country, or California. So these next two games are crucial for the Buckeyes as they prep for a couple of tough ones in December with that Duke and the aforementioned Kentucky game that are coming up. So um, I, I want to see if Ohio State can get, get the ship righted now and I, play a complete game against Seton Hall and then hopefully win the second game as well when they take likely Florida, but could be California. But these next two games, though, are crucial for them. I want to see how they develop. I think they're still figuring out with some of the new faces on the team, still figuring out how, how to gel. I like what Zed Key's doing. Um, and E.J. Liddell, I love what he's doing. I think he's getting officiated um, a little bit too hard. Uh, he, he had foul trouble, a little bit of foul trouble, but not his fault. I think that there were some, a couple of uh, cheap calls on him, but um, he's an outstanding player, and uh, I can't wait to see what he does against Seton Hall and then against the Florida Cal, and I really can't wait to see what he does when they match up against uh, Duke, Kentucky, and then other teams in the Big Ten. Uh, the Ohio State women can do their unbeaten string with a 94-63 win over Bowling Green. They'll take on Bellarmine next week. Um, but the OSU women off to a great start too, also ranked in the top 20. So um, they look good so far as well. Kevin, uh, Kevin McGuff's team has, has got things going in the right direction there. So that's it for the Buckeye Blitz. I'll check in tomorrow as soon as the Ohio State Michigan State game ends and give you my reaction on that. This is the Buckeye Blitz. Jeff Tito Thidoff at Thid Happens on Twitter. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. 